thanks for joining us for this panel, which is part of our career exploration webinar series. Today's discussion focuses on the career paths and experiences of women who have professional careers as arch in architecture. I'm Dr. Susan Madsen, founding director of the Utah Women in Leadership Project and the Karen Haight Huntsman Endowed Professor of Leadership in the John M. Huntsman School of Business at Utah State University. And I am the host today and will be the panel moderator. So our career exploration webinars further the mission of the Utah Women in Leadership Project, which is to strengthen the impact of Utah girls and women. So first I wanna thank our sponsors, the Utah Education Network, the John M. Huntsman School of Business and USU Extension. So to get us started, I would like to introduce our three panelists and ask each of them why they chose to focus their careers specifically on architecture. So Celestia Carson, we'll go with you first, is the principal, is a principal architect with VCBO Architecture. She specializes in K through 12 educational facilities, higher education, recreation and healthcare projects. And she currently serves as chair of the Utah State Licensing Board of Architects. So Celestia is also founder and president of Women in Architecture Salt Lake City. She has a master's degree in architecture from the University of Utah. And I'll stop right there and ask you, why did you choose to focus your education and career in this field? That is a great question. Uh, you know, admittedly, uh, a lot of people who are architects might say that they had always known, you know, they grew up um, as, you know, small children playing with Legos and, and they knew that that's what they wanted to, to do. That was not the case for me. Um, I, I started uh, my bachelor's at Utah, uh, University of Utah at 18, not knowing what I wanted to major in. Uh, and uh, I took an op the opportunity to take lots of different classes, um, science, um, physics, biology, philosophy, meteorology, art, um, <laughs> just trying lots of different things. And it was at the end of my freshman year where I still didn't know what I wanted to major in. And uh, a friend of mine um, had indicated, he said, you know, I are you sure you don't want to try architecture? It seems like something that is right up your alley. And I, I honestly, I hadn't thought that seriously about it. And I went and visited the School of Architecture at the University of Utah. And, and at their building, they have an exhibition hall where you can see student projects. And I um, walked through the building and I saw all the student projects and it was sort of was like a bolt of lightning immediately. Uh, I saw the work and I knew that that was the field I, I wanted to go into. And I, I you know, registered for, for architecture classes right away and I haven't looked back. So my, my path might be unique, but I think what isn't unique is a lot of girls don't see architecture as a career for them until it is introduced as a possibility. Mm -hmm. And for those that it is sort of, you know, you're, you're wired in that way, um, it's right for you. And so that that was the case for me. I love that. And um, so immediately when you got into those classes, they connected with you. I know there's some hard classes sometimes in some of these fields, but it just connected and was interesting to you then. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing. So let's move over to Sophia Malik, who is a senior associate with Lloyd Architects. So Sophia champions community-focused and environmentally responsive design. Her work includes civic, cultural, and higher educational projects, as well as a community-scaled commercial work and high-end residential projects. And she earned a bachelor's degree from the Gerald D. Hines College of Architecture at uh, University of Houston. So I'd like to ask you that same question. Why did you choose to focus your education and then and your work uh, towards a career as an architect? So thanks, Susan, I appreciate that. You know, I don't have a, a very, I guess, dissimilar experience than Celestia did. I also kind of started off my career uh, wanting to be a doctor. So I uh, went to Boston University. I focused in, you know, 150% 
on everything that was required for, for that particular profession. And at 18, immediately felt burnt out. So when I had to kind of, you know, return home with my tail between my legs, <laughs> um, I, you know, kind of was thinking, you know, what, what could I do that would kind of take me in a different direction because I had been focused on this one path for so long. And my sister actually is an artist and a graphic designer. And she had had a friend who was in the School of Architecture at the University of Houston. And I knew that I had to, I'm from Houston. So I had to go back home from Boston, all this kind of stuff. So, um, you know, she just kind of mentioned architecture. I was like, you know, I don't know anything about it. I wasn't brought up around it. I didn't know you know, really what it meant. Uh, I knew maybe there was some physics involved, <laughs> uh, you know, things like that. So um, I enrolled and didn't know what I was getting into, but it's kind of seemed like this exciting, like mystery to me. And literally from day one, when we did our first project, which had to do with like construction paper pieces, I was hooked because it was just such a different way of thinking. Uh, you know, it was like a different part of your mind that you had to use use to come up with these different scenarios, whether it was, you know, moving pieces of paper around on another piece of paper or, you know, going throughout the process of architecture school, which is when you start to think about buildings and spaces and just the passion that I think the people that uh, were around me and the our professors had for it, it just really felt like the right fit once I got into it, just kind of same thing as slushy. It was like a light bulb went off, like, oh, where was this before? Like, I didn't know anything about this. So kind of a different path also. Um, but I think, you know, coming from maybe a generation of like, you know, women who weren't really introduced to that, like in high school, which I think there are some high schools that do have drafting and things like that. That wasn't the case where I went to school. So, you know, the path wasn't very clear from a younger age. Uh, so now, you know, as being part of the Women in Architecture Board also with Slash Jim, and and Valerie, uh, you know, we really, I think, make it our goal to try to reach out to a younger group as much as we can, uh, just to like put it out there that this is an option. I love that. And I and Celestia, you mentioned I, I didn't grow up like playing with logo or you know, logos and or log, yeah, what are they called? Legos. Legos. I'm like logos. So I, that's been on my mind. So you didn't grow up playing with the them or different structures, but it came. But it wasn't. Early. It wasn't that connection yeah. for me, that that was a career. Yeah, it was a segue to a career. Mm -hmm. So I'm very interested to see if Valerie has the same experiences now with two of you, really having that connection in college more than any place else. So. Um, so Valerie Nagasawa is a principal architect and director at GSBS Architects. The daughter of an innovative educator, Valerie has a special interest in learning environments, and she leads her company's K-12 practice and is involved in civic projects as well with her company, specifically city halls and public safety facilities. And she has a master's degree in architecture from the University of Utah. Same question to you. Why did you choose focus your education and your career path in this area? Well, thank you for having me today. It's great to be here. Um, my path is a little bit different and maybe a little bit in some ways even less informed um, than Sophia's and Celestia's. I was um, a kid that liked to doodle and draw, and I was not by any means great at it. <laughs> I was not I was not an artist, but I, I did. I really liked to, to do that. And from an early age, I, you know, I had a little bit of an inclination toward math. I was a good math student. And I, I want to make a disclaimer that you don't have to be good at math to be an architect, because I think that's a myth. But for me, that was a perception I had about myself, because that was what my teachers told me. Oh, you're good at math. You know, I did well at math. And, and that was great. That was confidence building for me. So I saw myself as somebody who had, you know, who had some math, maybe talent, but also had some interest in art and drawing. And, and I never quite knew, like, how do you combine those things? And then I was in high school, I think I was in 10th grade, and I was taking geometry class. And I, I really liked it. I, I thought it was cool. You know, I just thought it was fun. And one of my classmates, and I'm going to say her name, because this, this is a credit to her, Rosemary Aquaviva, I think she was our valedictorian, um, she was a great student, better student than me, but she was not enjoying geometry. And she, I heard her say, well, forget architecture. 
and just a light bulb went off and I thought, oh, architecture. You know, that sounds like something that maybe would combine my interests. And I didn't know anything about it. And I, I just stuck with it because, you know, at that age, you, you need something, right? <laughs> I knew I was going to college. I needed something. I needed to pick a major. And um, I came to the University of Utah and it was actually a graduate program here. So I, you know, the thinking then was that people came together from different undergraduate disciplines and, and sort of brought what they learned to the Graduate School of Architecture. So it was a little bit of a long road from deciding in, in you know, sophomore year in high school that I wanted to be an architect to really getting into the graduate program. So my undergraduate years were, you know, filled with architecture prerequisites, and and I just knew nothing about it. It was all completely foreign to me, and um, and it was scary. You know, I didn't know anything about design. I didn't. I knew, you know, I there, I had a neighbor that was an architect. I mean, I I knew a few architects, but I didn't know a whole, whole bunch about it. But um, it really kind of sucks you in. You know, it's it's fascinating, and it really involves so much of everything. And so if you're a person, I think that's interested in people and history and culture, you know, if you're a creative person, if you're a problem solver, if you're somebody that likes to get into the detail of how things go together, there really is a place for you in architecture. Um, and I think that's, you know, I think that's what's so great about it. They're just, you know, there's a, a lot, a lot to focus on and a lot to love. And it's a kind of career that you, you are learning, you know, throughout your career and you know, every day it's, it's something new. Um, and that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm going to jump into some other questions. And Celestia, I'll start with you. What types of careers are available in your in your field? That's a that's a great question. Um, the the three of us represent practicing architects, which means we are are licensed architects, and we can um, stamp drawings for buildings to be built. Um, and that is just one part of the industry overall. If we think about what we call the A&E, architecture and engineering industry, each building that we design or each building that is built um, really includes a team of people um, that expands to engineering, structural engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, landscape design, civil engineering, um, each building, it, you know, ultimately is constructed, and so there is the whole construction industry uh, that we work collaboratively with. Um, there is visualization and in, in rendering and graphics. There is building material um, design um, from carpet to paint to uh, construction, uh, you know, exterior building materials and metals and, and concrete and brick. Um, the, it really is a huge industry with so many opportunities. Uh, architecture is one part of it. It is the part that, that we are passionate about, that we love. Um, but certainly it is an industry that there can be a place for, for many people. And women in particular um, are, you know, sort of not well representative represented within the industry and there are lots of opportunities uh, for women within within the industry. So there's those two sides. I think we could absolutely speak specifically to to architecture. Um, but what we touch as a whole in the built environment is is almost limitless for for job opportunity. Thank you so much. And Sophie, I just want to build on that a little bit because I was going to mention, our architecture is seen as more of a man's job, right? More men are in that. But do you see there's more women, at least some, there's starting to be more women. And, and, and I'm sure there are companies that are much more welcoming to women these days because that's important. They understand the difference um, uh, that it makes when you have men and women working together on these things. Any comments, Sophia? Yeah, I mean, I went to architecture school you know, over 20 years ago, uh, this is when I started. And so I think that what I kind of see from that point to now is different than even before I, you know, started architecture school. So, um, you know, when I went to school, it was definitely like a 50-50 in the school that I went to representation oh. of women and men. And, you know, as, and I think we may talk about this a little bit later, but I think as the per, you get into the profession, you kind of move through it, you see those numbers start to change. And, 
and what I think, you know, obviously there are things like, um, you know, families and opportunities and things like that, that kind of affect those different scenarios. But what is really exciting about, you know, the time that we're in now is that there's enough women that have been in it long enough that are supporting the younger generation that's coming up. So, you know, there are those of us like me who are kind of in the middle. Then there's those of us who have, you know, you know, been doing it since the eighties or the nineties or, you know, whatever that looks like. And I think all of us have kind of had these different experiences where we really feel a lot of us, you know, kind of, you know, I guess, compelled to support the generation that's coming up. So the issues that we had that we dealt with, we wouldn't necessarily want to recreate those scenarios again. So yes, you know, we still combat, you know, the gender parity issue, which is why the three of us are involved in the women in architecture group in Salt Lake. Uh, but I do think that, you know, the only thing that I could say optimistically that it is getting better and that I've even seen that in the course of my career, where there's more women in the office, there's more women in leadership, and, you know, people are just sticking with it in a, in a way that just feels a little bit more supportive, supported than, you know, just being like all men in the room all the time. So I don't know if that completely answers the question. No, I, but. Think, I think it does, because as junior high, young women in high school, you know, young women are thinking about it, things, things are shifting. And even though it's been viewed as a masculine, it connects with so many women um, in in fun ways, and I can tell all three of you love your your positions and love what you do. It's motivating, I'm sure, each day. So, uh, Valerie, I would love to have you talk about um, in this field particularly. You know, what associates, bachelor's, graduate degrees would you recommend? Is it really you really need to go down the path of architecture? Uh, for all of those degrees, even a master's, to really be in this field. Some fields you can come to right. with lots of things, but it feels like maybe it's more guided in this field. Any thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So to become a, a licensed architect, you have to have a professional degree in architecture, and that is either a five-year bachelor's degree. There are some five-year bachelor's programs um, around the country or a master's degree, and I think master's degrees are probably a little bit more typical these days. Um, and, and with those degrees, you graduate and you're able to become <clears throat> licensed, so sit for the licensing exams, and that's important if you want to be a licensed architect. And really, you know, we, we can't even call ourselves architects if we're not licensed. Oh, and so, really? okay. you know, it's, it's, if you want to be an architect, that's really the path for you. But um, you can also, there are a lot of undergraduate programs in architecture that, that you would, you know, enroll in and complete, and that would prepare you for a professional degree program or graduate school. Um, also, there are associates programs at, at different colleges. I think, you know, they've got different names. Some of them might be called architecture. Some might, you know, have to do with design technology and, and construction, but these are um, also leave. ways yeah, there are ways to, to be involved in the profession. Maybe you don't want to be a licensed architect, but maybe you're really interested in design technology and, um, you know, computer modeling or rendering or things like that. Or maybe you have kind of an inkling that you're interested in architecture, but you're not altogether sure you don't want to commit to, um, you know, a university and, and a bachelor's program or a master's program. Then maybe you, you know, kind of test it out with an associate's degree and, and see how you like it. And then confirm that you do and then launch into your professional degree program. So I think, you know, there are different ways to do it. But if you if you want to become a licensed architect, you really need to be looking at, at the degree programs that will get you there. And I wanted to say also to your last question about, you know, careers in architecture, there there's also, I, I, you know, I think the numbers of women in architecture school are definitely, you know, much higher than they were. I was one of five women in my class. I think our graduating class was 25 people. But now I think the numbers really are closer to, to 50, you know, percent. So that's great. Um, and, and not everybody that graduates with their professional degree, um, you know, and even becomes licensed continues to practice architecture. Some, you know, some architects uh, become owner's representatives. They go to work for maybe this, the state of Utah. Maybe they work for school districts. Maybe they work for developers. And so they're, repre they're still very much involved in, in you know, the building the the you know building the environment but they're but they're not doing it as a practicing architect yeah. and so i think that's really important too because you know in addition to having more women in architecture we want more women that are clients of architects also who are really shaping cities and 
built environment and help you make great decisions about, you know, about how we, about how we design and how we build. And, um, and so that's important too. And a, an architectural education, a, a design education is, is really helpful in a lot of ways, I think, to be involved kind of in the whole, um, you know, the whole sort of industry of, of design and building. Thank you so much. So I've got three questions, but, but our time is moving along. So I'm going to ask each of you which question you want to answer. So my first one is, really, can a career as an architect be family friendly? And the second is, can you make a good salary being an architect? And then I want one to answer some advice. Um, and, and why would you encourage young women? So who wants to take the family friendly question? And any, any of us can. Yes, uh, Valerie. Yeah, I, I will say absolutely. And and I, I'll, you know, I'll start that by saying architecture is hard work. I mean, it, it takes a lot of focus and a lot of effort. You have to bring your whole self. There is no phoning it in. <laughs> there really isn't. You know, we're dealing with life safety, you know, and, and structures and, and you know, and, and a lot of money being spent. So it's it's an important thing and it takes focus. But I've got two children. I know Sophia has children and Celestia has children. And um, I think most, you know, a lot of the women architects I know do. So it's it's absolutely family friendly because, you know, over the course of your career, you you make choices about kind of how you spend all the time you have available to you. And, um, you know, you you I think it ebbs and flows when your kids are little, you make, you make different choices, maybe than when they're grown and out of the house. But I've had, you know, I've had kids, I had kids, you know, start having kids when I was about 30. Um, I had been, you know, licensed for maybe three years at that point. So most of my career in architecture has been as a mom. And I've, I've been the kind of mom I wanted to be, which was a great hands-on involved with my kid's mom. <laughs> and I have a husband who's an architect too, and he's a very hands-on dad. So I think it does take a support system like it, it does for everybody, um, but absolutely can be family friendly. Thank you. And then my next question is, you know, can you make a reasonable salary and what might be the job range? Sophia or Celestia, who wants to take that one? Oh, <laughs> I'll take that Celestia, one. I'll let you take that one. I can see Sophia. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, absolutely, it can be a, a, a very, uh, sort of, uh, you know, a healthy um, salary. It, as admittedly, architecture is the kind of profession that it takes a long time to be really good at it. It is kind of a, a lifelong career. Um, coming out of school, as uh, Valerie said, you really need that that professional degree, be it a five-year bachelor's or the six-year, the total program, the, the master's degree. So you and probably it, start salaries because of that a little bit higher than a lot of people just it, coming out with their bachelor's. I think there are some studies that say for a professional degree, it might be a little bit lower than some others, but your long-term growth is greater, right? So you can come out of school making somewhere in the range of 60, 65,000, I think. And that can continue to just grow as you get your license. And so, um, you know, as you come out of school, you're not yet licensed. You still have to have some experience within the firm. You need to pass the licensing exams. Um, and you need to really understand how buildings are, are put together. And that is gained through experience. And as your experience builds, your growth potential financially increases. Um, and I think ultimately, if you are a leader within a firm, if you own your own firm, the earning potential, frankly, can be very significant. You can do really very well. And it is an industry that although we, you know, are impacted by the economy when the economy is not great, people aren't building as many buildings. It is an industry that will never go away. There will always be a need. There will always be an increase in the built environment. And so there is certainly job safety there. And so, yes, you can have a, a healthy salary, a successful career, and you can retire well in, in this field. Thank you so much. And before I pop over to that last question, I'm going to wait for a minute. And Sophia, I'm going to give you the first question from our uh, folks that are joining us today with this webinar. What is your favorite part of the job that you have? 
Well, I think that something that was surprising to me that became one of the favorite parts of my job was actually the relationships that you have with people. I think when most people think of architecture, they're thinking we're drawing, we're, you know, we're working away, you know, all night long, whatever that looks like, making models. And that's definitely part of the job. I mean, that's that's kind of, you know, as Valerie had mentioned, like we work hard and, and we do a lot of that work. But the thing that is really interesting to me about architecture is the relationships that we have with the people that we're working with. So that can be clients, that can be our consultants who are the engineers on the project. We we really work together as a team. And one of the most exciting things to learn about is really when you have a client, whether it's you know doing a, a school, which can be a group of clients or a board of some kind to like one person who's building their house, that relationship is, is such a, a huge part of what we do because really understanding the needs of what we're trying to produce you know at the end of the day it's a building or a series of buildings or whatever that looks like but what makes it truly have a story and really come to life is whenever we work with the people that we work with and we do it well so building those relationships and really doing that at the beginning of the project is such a huge part of of what we do and that to me is is one of the favorite things for me of my job the building relationships. So you have plenty of opportunities. You're not just sitting in front of a computer screen or or one of the yeah. old, my dad used <laughs> to have one of those old drafting desks or whatever. That's what I picture for hours. I love this question that just came in. And Valerie, I'm going to put this over to you. And, right. and that is what of all the projects that you've been part of, what project was your favorite? Oh, that's such a hard question. I always have trouble <laughs> with favorites, but I'll tell you, because this is, is pretty cool. I got to um, lead the design of a middle school rebuild that was my neighborhood middle school that my where my both my kids went. And for me, that was, you know, that was my favorite because it was really personal. And, you know, after going through years of designing and being part of the, the building construction, I got to go into the building with my kids and use it like one of the, you know, one of the building users. And I got to see the teachers that I worked with during the design process. And, you know, they, they told me what they loved about it and they told me what didn't work about it, you know, and they were, they, it was just a, a great rapport. And, you know, it was, it was interesting too, you know, to be able to talk to the other parents and, and for people in my neighborhood to know that I had, you know, that I had a hand in that. And so um, that was wonderful for me. Um, I love that, Celestia. That's such a good question. I, I want to ask you that one too. Well, they, I, I think as architects, we we have an answer a lot of us use, and it's your the fa your favorite is the one you're working on right now. <laughs> oh. um, because I, you know, I I have been very fortunate in my my career today. I've worked on some great schools. I do a lot of university work now. Um, I'm, I'm always excited about the project I'm on that your, your past projects that are built sort of feel like children. Oh. And, um, so it's hard to pick some over so those over university, time. those are big buildings. So it, it's interesting, you know, I admittedly, I know I logged onto this, like right when we were starting, because I had a construction meeting today. So I was on site, uh, for a construction meeting for a project. I'm currently at Weber state right now. And I'm I'm sitting in a building that I've designed to have this interview. Oh. And so, you know, it's always exciting for us to to go back and, and spend time in, in buildings that that we have worked on. And that that is something special. So I'm currently in the um the Norda Engineering building here at Weber State that opened just last year. So I love that. And and Sophia, I'm gonna give you that real quick. I know we're running out of time, but but I thought that was such a great question. What what has been one of your favorites or your favorite? Well, like Celestia said, I mean, the answer is the one that you're working on right now. <laughs> so for me, what's surprising because I um, did, did it, wouldn't really necessarily call myself a residential architect. I've done a lot of work um, in higher education, civic libraries, you know, things like that, um, which I've loved each of those projects. But my most current project that is actually under construction right now is um, a private residence uh, for a client who's actually a good friend of mine as well. And oh. she's an art collector. And so the the really cool thing about this building is that it's been completely built around viewing art and just showcasing art. So the building itself is is something that, you know, 
we're hoping is kind of a quieter part of the landscape because also she has this beautiful site and things like that. So, it, you know, we we work on huge buildings and we can also work on these kind of smaller jewel-like buildings too, which can be really exciting. And I'm I'm really just honored to have the chance to work on that because I think that in some ways, you know, every project is so personal to clients. And when you get to residential, it becomes, you know, that layer just deepens even more. And so when you're working on a home with somebody, it's like you you really dive into some, you know, really deep <laughs> conversations. And so I think that, you know, it, it's it's architecture in the end, but to get to that point, to create the space that someone's going to live in for the next, you know, it could be 50 years or more, um, and they might may pass on to their own children and things like that. That's that's a pretty exciting thing. But this project has been ex extremely special because of that art connection as well as the architecture. I love that. And I'm sure that you want them to love it. So you want to do something that brings them joy, right? When they walk exactly. in the space. I get a little teary eyed. I don't know why. Maybe because do I, we? Moved into, <laughs> I moved into a home um, right at the beginning of the pandemic. It was already built, and but it brings me joy. I've not had a, a home that brings me so much joy. So I love that. So it's time to conclude, but I want to ask maybe one or two sentences from each of you, Valerie. I'll start with you. Why would you encourage young women to consider a career in in um, architecture? Ah, uh, because it's fun. <laughs> it's rewarding. And at the at the end of the day, you know, or at the end of the project, you can drive down the street and say, "That's what I worked on last year, or this year, or last month." You you can see the results of your work. And I think there's something really satisfying about that. And you can also observe how it helps to shape other people's lives, you know, and how it can be really important. When I when I think about the schools that we design, you know, and, and that anybody can enjoy that school, um, anybody, it doesn't matter who, that feels really good to me. And so I, you know, I'd say, yeah, you can have a, a great impact on, on people's lives. You can help shape the built environment. And it's it's really fun and satisfying and rewarding. Thank you. Selecha. Yeah, I, I I think to kind of follow Valerie's comment, mine is along the same you know uh, same lines. There's a um, a quote that I like to share. Winston Churchill famously once said, "We shape our buildings, and thereafter they shape us." Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of truth to that. And we know that in our profession, it um, our profession does not reflect the communities that we serve demographically in terms of women and minorities. And imagine what we're missing in our communities by not having more of these voices at the table um, to shape our communities, to shape our buildings. And it's a profession that I love, and I certainly would encourage anyone to, to consider it. Thank you. And Sophia. I mean, Celeste took the words right out of my mouth. I think having a, a group that represents diverse voices for our, our built environment is, is so important and you know the more that we continue to bring diverse voices whether it's gender or racial ethnicity whatever that looks like that's such an important thing for all professions and especially in the profession of architecture because it is so community based and i would 150% say it is fun it is something that you can be passionate about and um and there's so many different options uh not just a licensed architect but so many different things that you can go into the field of architecture I love that. Thanks to all of you, my guests, Celestia, Sophia, and Valerie, for being part of today's webinar. And thanks to the Utah Education Network for their partnership on this series as well. And finally, to all of you listening in, remember that you really do have so many career options. And I encourage you to explore so many of these options. There are so many. And then also consider your individual interests, your passions gifts, talents, and strengths. These combined with a college and university education can help you prepare for an engaging and meaningful profession throughout your life. So thanks for listening in and thanks again to our panelists. Thank you. Thank you for including Thank us. Thank you.